This is a real underdog story. Ten years in the making. Sorry. Thirteen years. We'll address the PK. Clock saved it! Gonzalo Varon gets by two defenders, plays it across, right Phillips! Oh, what a save by Clark! started telling people that he was going to be a professional soccer player one day and um, even back then when Steve tells you he's going to accomplish something he doesn't tell you in a wishful thinking sort of way he tells you in the sense that I am going to accomplish this or I'm gonna die trying he said I play with my friends at recess and they're on the traveling team and they say I'm the best goalkeeper they ever saw you know, he started playing soccer in our hometown about the age of six, I think. Um, and I remember picking him up one day. He was about eight years old, all right? It was a hot July day. I mean, he got in the car, his hair was all matted down to his face, and he'd been sweating and playing. And So I just asked him about his play and the game itself, and, and he looked up at me real serious, and he goes, Dad, I'm going to play professional. He was so determined and so laser focused on his goal. Of course, I knew uh, when you were really little, just watching you and Brian kick balls out on Howell Road. I recall when we were on our way home from West Virginia one time from a tournament, and I was in the back seat, and I could hear you talking to your buddies. Here I am, trapped in a Cavalier with my mother and my grandma and a Chihuahua. When he was 10, he didn't dream of being a soccer pro. He actually knew, as much as he's known uh, anything for sure, that he was really a soccer pro in a little boy's body just waiting to grow up. He is not heavily recruited out of high school. So um, he winds up at Oaken University. He is most infamously known as the kid who slept behind the soccer fields in a tent um, for several months because he couldn't afford housing at one point. Uh, long story short, found out that the kid's freaking uh, living in the woods uh, at Oakland because he's been kicked out of the apartments and he can't find a place to live, so he goes and buys a tent and uh, basically living in the woods um, for weeks on end for God knows how long. And I will never forget the first time that I met him. I was in the athletic training room riding a stationary bike and he walks right up to me and the first thing that he says to me is, what's up new girl? I'm Steve Clark. We should go on a date sometime. And <laughs> the second thing that he says to me is, did you know that I'm going to be a professional soccer player one day? And I remember thinking, man, this guy is real sure of himself. Um, but I also remember believing him. What is so interesting to me about this time that I know now that I did not know then is that Steve was failing in his life at this time and he was failing miserably and he did not get invited to Major League Soccer Combine. So um, he is traveling around the country in his beat up Toyota, often sleeping in his car at times, just trying to get one or two trainings with these professional soccer teams. But it was what happened after college, right after college, that I was really proud of. Because that was a time where he got cut from a lot of teams and, and he kept going. I mean, the ability to go through that kind of adversity, right? He, you can imagine, he would be devastated. A lot of people are telling him like, hey, it's time to hang up the boots. You've done a good effort, um, but you need to pay your bills. And um, as sort of a last ditch effort, Steve decides that if Major League Soccer isn't having him at this time, maybe there's a place for him somewhere in Europe. So he buys a 
plane ticket to Europe and spends a couple weeks bouncing around trying to get different trials, just basically anyone who will have him. And at the very end of his trip, he ends up in Norway visiting an old teammate um, that he played with in college. And this Norwegian teammate um, gets him a tryout with one of the biggest clubs in the Norwegian Premier League at the time. And despite all odds, they like him and they want to offer him a place on the roster. You get into this point where like no is, you know, it's just another word. And I, I, I was cut by a lot of teams. Um, but for me, I wanted it and I wasn't going to let anybody ever define me. <laughs> when I saw him play his first professional game, we went to Norway. Fran and I went to Norway and we were in Hanafoss, took a bus to an away game. And when he took the field, when he took the field, I was really proud of him. Much like college, four and a half years later, he's won just about every MVP award the team had to offer. Um, he has a new wife, which is a totally different story. And most importantly, he has finally found his place in Major League Soccer. Um, he has a contract with the Columbus Crew. So um, it's now 2014 and we are moving to Columbus. And um, despite uh, Norway being a really great thing for his career, it was really tough personally to live abroad um, for that long. There's a lot of lonely nights and a lot of homesickness that goes into it. Um, so to be playing back so close to home in front, in front of friends and family, we knew was going to be amazing, um, but we actually had no idea how amazing it was going to be. Just his second year of being back um, in the States, he is in the final championship game and it's a home game. I told Steve before uh, he left that win or lose, whether he throws the ball in the back of the net or they have the most amazing game of their life, he's already taken care of. God loves him, I love him, his family loves him, and he already has everything that he needs. It wasn't an hour later when that whistle blew for the game and in the first 30 seconds of the game, Steve makes um, a major mistake which results in the other team scoring within the first 30 seconds um, of the match beginning. And they go on to lose the game two to one. And I remember looking at him out on that field and just thinking, wow, this sport can be really cruel sometimes. And I just remember digging my head into my hands and sobbing and thinking why he's taken that touch a thousand times why this game why now and I remember walking into the locker room and finding him and again just sobbing in his arms and and I'll never forget the first thing he said to me he picked my head up and he looked at me and he said Corella our house is not built on sand. Our house is built on the Lord and we're gonna be okay. And I knew he was tough and I knew my husband, but that was the first time that I had ever firsthand experienced his absolute unbreakable spirit. Um, at the end of 2016, when the club tried to renegotiate his contract, um, we sort of made the tough decision that it was time for us to move on. And I think that was sort of a mutual thing and it was best for all parties, um, but it didn't make it any easier. We were really mourning, you know, the loss of our life in Columbus. And we made an even tougher decision that Steve was going to go back um, to Europe and he was going to play in the Danish Premier League. There's so much that I can say about the difficulties and the strain of those six months. Um, but what I will say is that if anything could break us, if anything could tear him down and tear us down, it would have been those six months. 
and they didn't. And Steve came back to the US after the season in June of 2017. We're really excited about the possible opportunities of him moving to a new European country. We decided to move forward negotiating with a club in Belgium. Their current goalkeeper is refusing a loan out to another club and therefore they don't have a roster spot for him. I remember um, watching Steve drive four hours round trip to Toledo every single day because that was the best training that he could get and um, because he didn't know when he was gonna have to leave and he needed to be in shape. And I will never forget packing our bags three times and unpacking our bags three times. And I will never forget boxing up all of our stuff, our whole American life in boxes that had absolutely no destination on them. Um, and there's just this one day that sticks in my mind more than anything. It was at the very tail end where we're losing all hope of where Steve's gonna sign and we're really faced with the reality of we don't know what's going to happen with his career. And I had driven with Steve to two hours to Toledo for his training and I remember him getting out of the car, opening up the back of our car, sitting in the trunk of our car, taping up his thumb and his ankle himself. And I'm having these visions of him in front of tens of thousands of fans playing in these championship games and all the success that he's had and, you know, the, the absolute, um, amazing staff that has taped his ankles for the last 10 years and um, I'm looking at him and what I realize is none of that matters to him and in that moment he was just that kid the same way he has been his whole life just doing whatever it took to make it if that meant being a 30 year old professional athlete taping his own body parts in the back of his car driving two hours to a training it didn't matter and that was the second time that I looked at him and I thought man this kid is absolutely unbreakable his spirit is unbreakable when I hear the word Steve Clark I think of pure human resilience I think of the entire world having burned down in flames and it's just pure ash everywhere and Steve Clark is the one thing left standing. You know, that's what makes you such a great leader. Um, you know, you know how to get the best out of, out of your teammates and um, a great voice in the locker room. An unbelievable friend and um, uh, he, he's the man, you know, nothing short of that. So I love him, I wish him a happy birthday and uh, all the best. It's not just all his external physical prowess on the field, it's the mental game he plays and wins too. There's no question in my mind what really stands out and that's his dedication and just drive for um, just about anything that he really believes in. My bro is exactly who he says he is. Nothing gets in his way, whether it's living in a tent on campus or selling all of his stuff to move to Norway to cold call coaches. A guy that never gives up. We are celebrating his 10th year as a professional soccer player here in Washington, D.C. We're also celebrating his 32nd birthday. And while Steve has so many awards and so many accolades and so many things that I could talk about that make him so special, I say that those things are just things. And what should be truly celebrated about these 10 years of him being a professional soccer player in his 32 years of life is that eight-year-old boy who dared to dream something so big. And that college kid who knew no limits, even if that meant sleeping outside. And that young man who believed in himself when no one else did. And to that hot-headed rookie who grew up to be one of the greatest leaders I've ever known and to that grown man who lives out his faith, not in his words, but in his actions, day in and day out. And to my husband and your unbreakable spirit, I love you so much. I am so proud of you. Happy birthday. Stevie, 10 years is a pro, my man. Who would have thought, right? I love you, Uncle Stevie. I love you this much. Hey, buddy. Happy birthday and congratulations on a wonderful career so far. Happy birthday. Um, I love you, Steve. Happy birthday. Um, hopefully we have many more memories together and uh, 
I hope you enjoy it. We love you, Uncle Stevie. Congrats, Steve, on being a pro athlete for 10 years. I can't express how grateful Pat and I have been to enjoy watching you play. Happy birthday, man. Steve. <laughs> Happy birthday, love you. Happy birthday, Steve. Congratulations, Stephen. 10 years is a really long time to play. You've always got us over here rooting for you wherever you go and whatever you do. Happy birthday. You know, I just wanted to say congratulations and uh, you know, you fought for everything that you've gotten and, and it's been amazing to, to be alongside you on this journey. Happy birthday and congrats on 10 years being pro. Love you. Happy birthday, Steve. Just want to tell you happy birthday. I love you this much. Happy birthday, Steve. Happy birthday. Thank you, my baby birthday. Yay. Happy birthday and congrats on 10 years in your career. I can't wait to see what you do with the rest. 